Welcome to our next lecture. Today's lecture is going to be on topicality, both how to read topicality and how to answer topicality. What is topicality? Topicality is the first theory argument we are going to learn about. What do I mean by theory? Everything else we've learned so far operates within the realm of the topic in the context of like imagining someone's defending something, okay? So a counter plan is an answer to the affirmative's plan. A disadvantage is an answer to the affirmative's plan. An advantage is a reason the affirmative's plan is a good idea. Essentially, when we're reading those arguments, the reason we have done so is because we think the AF has met their burdens. They have done their job. They are not cheating. I am accepting that that is a legitimate plan and therefore I can engage with it and I can respond to it with all the tools we just talked about. Reading a counter plan, reading a disadvantage, reading a link turn, impact turn, outweighs, non unique, no link, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Theory argument is meta debate. What does the word meta mean? When someone says like meta something, like meta gaming or metadata. It's referring to itself. Okay, what's metadata? Like we know that like Facebook steals our metadata and like tracks our metadata. What does that mean? Data about data. Data about data, right? I think you're both doing the same thing. So when I say it's meta debate, what am I saying? You're debating the debate. You're debating about how you should be debating. Topicality is defense against the dark arts. It's what you read when you think the other person's cheating. Okay? And there are four parts to topicality. This is the first thing I ever learned in debate. Sasan Kisravi, the other guy who does Proteus 3 Academy thing. On my first day that I met him, he, he was going to do a lecture. I'm like, what are we going to learn about today? And he goes, do you know about topicality? And I'm like, I have no idea what that means. And he goes, great. I'm going to teach you it, and you're going to never forget it. Because he said there's a fantastic acronym. Okay, and this is the guy that came up with button. He says there's a fantastic acronym for remembering the parts of topicality. And he goes, here's what you're going to remember. I want some water. I want some water. And I was like, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That is the worst acronym of all time. I was like, you're never going to forget it, though. He was right. What are the four parts of a topicality? The four parts of a topicality. Tristan, you want to help me out here? You think you got these off the Interpretation, bill? violation, Woo! and invoke. Okay. Interpretation, which we usually just call the inter. The violation, the standards, and the voters. Okay, four parts to topicality. Zooming out for one second. This certainly does apply to topicality, which is a specific theory argument. But the good news is every single theory argument, which might even be hard for you to imagine, like what else is there even to have a theory about? Every single one uses this exact same recipe, the exact same structure. What changes is going to be what each part is. In topicality, when we say interpretation, what we are saying is here is what the words in the resolution, the topic, mean. And I want to be clear that this can be multiple words. This can be literally a single word. This could theoretically be all the words. That almost never happens, though. You shouldn't do that. And it could also be like a term of art or something that's in the topic. But what you're saying is, this is a word in the resolution, and here is the definition of it. Here is our interpretation, what we think that word means. What we think this resolution, this topic, is asking us to debate about. Okay? What do you think violation is going to be? When I say we're going to read a violation. You broke the rule. You broke the rule. You cheated. Violation. Here is how you failed to 
meet or satisfy that definition, that interpretation. Okay? And I'm going to give you examples once I have all these definitions up there. It's going to be super clear. Standards. Anyone want to take a stab at what standards might be? We said so far, here's what the rule should be. Here's what the words of the resolution mean. Here's how you violated them. Any guess on what standards would be? Do you think the other team is going to stand up and just go, you're right, that's the definition. We should lose. What would you do if you were the other team? There's only really two options. They've just said, this is the definition that we should use, and you have violated that definition. There's logically only two options you have for answering that. What's option one? No. -uh. Nuh-uh. Option one is no. uh We do meet that definition. But what's option two? The definition is invalid. Your definition is dog water. We have it our own definition. So standards are where you say here is why our interpretation is good for fairness slash education. This will make a lot more sense when you see an example, but hopefully it's not too complicated as of now. And then lastly, we have the voters. And the good news is the voters on all theory essentially are always identical. There's three things we have to say. Tristan, do you remember the three things? You didn't have to read a lot of tea last year, but I'm wondering if you do know this off the top of your head. A priori. Perfect. Okay, you're gonna get the other two, obviously. Okay, cool. So, first thing is we say it's a priori. I'll explain that in one moment. It's a Latin phrase. Then we say education and fairness. Okay, a priori. Does anyone know what a priori means in Latin? I feel like you might just randomly, but no. A, a priori is coming first, to come prior to, a prior, right? A priori is a classification of voting issues, okay? It's where you say, this is what we call a gateway issue, all right? There's a term in debate, to get nerdy for a second, there's a term in debate that we call NIDS, but what that stands for, because again, it's always an acronym, is necessary but insufficient burden, okay? A necessary but insufficient burden is where you say they must do this, but doing that doesn't win them the debate, okay? So they have to do this to even be allowed to win the debate, but just because they've done that, they don't automatically win the debate. And topicality is a nit, because what topicality says is, you must defend the topic, but just because you did doesn't mean you win the debate. Because like, duh, not cheating doesn't mean you win, it just means you didn't cheat. So what is a priori? A priori voting issues mean if we win this, the debate is over. Don't look at the advantages, don't look at who had the best speaking, don't look at anything else. If we win this, we should win the debate. It is a gateway issue, what we mean is, do not pass go, do not collect $200, go straight to jail. The judge, when you say a priori, what you're saying is, judge, the first thing you have to do when you're making your decision is decide whether they were topical or not. And if they weren't, the debate is over, we win. And if they were, they don't win, you just start considering the rest of the debate, okay? Why? Why would we need topicality to be an a priori, a gateway, issue. Why would we need it to come before evaluating whether the plan was better than the counter plan or whether the advantage outweighs the disap? Why? To be prepared for their definition. Okay. You need to be sure you're arguing about the same thing. That's closer. That's much closer actually. It's pretty good. Even if they win the debate, if it wasn't on the topic, it shouldn't matter. What is the implication in a format of debate, like the ones we're going to be doing, like Parley and IPDA, where you get 20 to, you find out the topic and then 20, 30 minutes later, you have to be able to debate on it, okay? All you were given was the topic. So if they don't talk about the topic, of course they're going to win the advantage. 
Of course they're gonna win all the answers to your positions because your positions aren't gonna link to them because they're not talking about the topic, right? Of course you're ahead of the debate if you got to cheat. Why wouldn't you be? Like, because if they go, well, we did all the better, we did so much better on our advantage and our disadvantage. Yeah, we couldn't answer it because you talked about something we weren't prepared to talk about. So let's give you a real world example of this. And I think I might have even mentioned this once or twice before. But Sasan was in a debate a long time ago at this point. Uh, and in that debate, and I have no idea if the camera can see this, so I'll just say it out loud, whatever. Um, the resolution was the USFG should significantly increase bank security. Now let's pretend you're Sasan, you're on the negative, okay? You're the negative on this topic. The United States federal government should significantly increase bank security. What are you expecting the affirmative team to say? Like what's their plan gonna roughly say? What's it gonna look like? Give me an example. What'd you do? You have the app. What are you gonna do? Reduce fraud. Hmm? Reduce fraud. Do something to reduce fraud, what else? <clears throat> that's an acceptable option. Increase, else? increase security in the vault. Okay, make the vault have a stronger lock or more security guards or whatever, right? Great. What did the affirmative come up and say? They came up and said, the United States federal government should increase bank security by uh, creating more levees along the Mississippi River. <laughs> and Sasan was like, what? And they said, yeah, bank, river bank. Um. And Sasan said, interpretation, banks are financial institutions, which blah, 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 blah. He didn't do it that fast or whatever, right? But like, he came up and said, no, you idiot. A bank is a bank. It's a financial institution that lends money, stores money, withdraws deposits, blah, 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 right? Violation, you're talking about rivers, homie. Standards, and then he explained why, you know, that, that was a good definition, et cetera, and then voting issues, et cetera, okay? Mm -hmm. Why are these terms clarified at the beginning? What do you mean? Why are these terms clarified at the beginning? By who? By whoever's giving up the topic. They don't want to. They, they want you to have the option to be tricky if you think you're good at answering this stuff. They don't want you to have to only do one thing. Most topics, this is actually really, that's such a smart question in like a million ways because there's completely different philosophies on this. When I write topics, my goal is uh, for there to be enough understanding of the resolution that the negative always can reasonably predict something the affirmative would do and therefore generate arguments based on it. But then simultaneously my goal is the app isn't pegged into one thing only. I want the app to be able to pick to do a variety of things, but all of those things will still link to the same ground. So to give you an example, if you were to say something like the United States federal government should significantly reduce uh, law enforcement, no matter what you do, I could read a disadvantage that is just law enforcement good. Or I could read a disadvantage that is like, you're gonna make cops really angry. No matter what you do, whether you get rid of police officers, take away their guns, make them all robots, make them use AI, make them not use AI, every single one of those links to, that's not good for cops, cops will be upset, okay? So some tournaments think that way. They think like, I want there to be flexibility. What does law enforcement mean? Is law enforcement even the cops? Or is law enforcement judges doing sentences? Or is law enforcement the creation of laws and the people who write those laws and the standards for those laws? Like, I don't know. Like, it's, it's cool frequently for us to be able to debate that. The hope is that it's on a topic like this, everyone knows we're talking about banks and they, where their creativity on the affirmative is, is they pick what the security measure is. But some people are like, that's not enough cheating for me. I wanna cheat even more. So now we're talking about river banks or whatever. I'll tell you, the, the, so I went to a school, University of Pacific, where there was just a rule that you must always defend a topic. Like you must, when you're in the affirmative, you must be topical. 
And if you're not, and Steve finds out, he's gonna pull your ass from the tournament. And you're going home, right? Because uh, Steve's old school. And that's what I believe, like, as an individual. But I don't make you guys do that, because I'm like, look, the kids wanna play and do some silly shit and win or lose them, and that's cool, I guess. But in novice, which is where all of you will be, like, everyone talks about the topic. In varsity, 50% of debates have nothing to do with the topic. And that makes it interesting. Because the really good people, they don't give a shit. Not a problem for me that you didn't talk about the topic. I'm gonna get you anyway. And like, that's a whole other world, but don't worry about any of that. That is so far off from where you are. Um, so, different people have different opinions on whether you should defend the topic, whatever. My opinion, I think you should defend the topic. Almost always, 99.9% .9 of the time. Because there's nothing in this world as a coach that upsets me more than when my students lose to topicality. Because what it means is you're a coward and decided not to defend the topic because you wanted to get an advantage and then you lost for being a coward, you know? Like it's embarrassing. I can, I'm genuinely trying to think right now. I don't know that we've lost a debate on topicality in the four or five years I've been a coach here like ever. Because like I'm just so big on like, no, we're, we're, we defend the topic. Because you can't lose to topicality almost ever if you just defend the topic, right? We beat so many schools on this. We beat so many schools all year long on that's not what the topic is. This is my favorite argument in all debate. We beat people on a lot. Um, and we almost never lose to them, which is good for us. Now, what's the disadvantage? We don't get to cheat, and then we don't get you know an advantage. Now, sometimes, do we do this? 100%. Last year, first tournament of the semester, uh, no, sorry, two years ago, first tournament of the semester, we had these two novices who had no right to even be advancing to elimination rounds. They just were like, they were like the last team to make it through. I think they went two and two, but they had good speaker points. And they made it all the way to finals. In semifinals, they lost the debate, but the other team got found out they were cheating, like they were looking up stuff online during the round and got DQ'd. So we got to go into finals. <laughs> and we were in finals against the University of the Pacific, who like theoretically should be a much better debate team than us. And uh, I went to them and I'm like, hey, here's the deal. The topic came out, the topic sucked. Awful topic. I didn't like it. I didn't want to spend it. And I was like, hey, here's the deal, gang. This is all house money. Like, you've already made it further than you planned. You're already guaranteed to get a trophy of some kind. Do you want to just do something wacky and not talk about the topic and instead talk about Marxism? And they were like two like little leftists. And they were like, yeah! And so we did that and we won. Um, but like, we almost never do that because the topic's usually defensible. Anywho, ignoring all that, let's come back to this. Standards. Let's talk a little bit more about standards. I'm going to erase this. Standards. Most of the debate on topicality, especially uh, at the level you folks are at, will occur at the level of the standards. Another term for standards that some people like to use is reasons to prefer. The reasons to prefer our interpretation. So what are the standards? Okay, how do we as the negative when we're reading topicality, because topicality is a negative argument, how do we justify our interpretations being good? Well, we keep things really simple here at DVD. <coughs> For the affirmative and the negative, there's only a couple standards we read. If we're the negative, we always say predictable limits, and we usually say field context. And I'll explain both of those. So here's the deal. When we say predictable limits, what we're trying to say is our definition allows for the debate to be limited, right? And limiting the debate is good for the negative because it gives us more predictable ground. If we limit the affirmative's options down to a certain subset, that it makes it easier for the negative to guess what the affirmative is going to do because we don't know their plan ahead of time. And that creates educational and fair debates. We're not saying the app should only get one option. We're saying they should get like three to five, not a hundred, not a thousand, because we can't possibly prepare for all 1,000 things. And these are predictable limits because, and you justify your definition. Well, our definition comes from this source, or our definition allows for these specific affirmatives to happen. When we say banks and we say financial institutions, that could be investment banks versus uh, sort of commercial banks versus uh, public facing banks, right? Whatever. That's multiple options. When we say security, that could be cybersecurity, physical security, uh, security through obscurity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're giving them options through our definition, but still limiting them to something hopefully predictable. 
field context is where we say our definition just comes from a really, really good source, essentially. Uh, we tend to, this is an interesting thing, very important note. You can make up your definition, but you can't make up a source for it. What I mean by that is if you want to, you do not have to use any dictionary definition that exists in the world. You can say, this is what I think this word should mean in the context of this debate. And as long as you can justify why it's good, you can win the debate. But you can't say field context if you do that because you just made up a definition. But if we're doing a debate, let's pretend the debate's about uh, bank security and our definition comes from the United States Banking Security Administration. That doesn't exist, but let's pretend it did. That is field context, bro. The people in the field, the real people making real policy about banking security, this is their definition from their handbook. Why is that good for education and fairness? Well, it's really educational because it's the most real world. Right? We're using the definition the real policymakers do. Why is it fair? Because it gives you a bunch of ground, because obviously this exists and is used in the real world as the affirmative, and it helps the negative because it limits your possible options. Field context. Those are the only two we ever see on the negative. Predictable limits, field context. Now there's a reason we use the word predictable limits and not just limits, because you'll see a lot of teams just say the word limits. They'll be like limits. And the way they'll explain this is, the definition that limits most limits best. Like the idea being that the most limiting possible thing is the best possible thing. But that's dumb. Because you're kind of tricking yourself if you're the negative and say that. Because let's pretend you're the negative and you come up and say, uh, here's our definition of security. It includes these two things. What happens, and, and obviously one of those two things should not be the affirmative. They're, I don't know. You say A and B are allowed. They are C. How about if they come up and say only C is allowed? What just happened? Your definition as the negative. You can do A or B. Their definition as the affirmative. You can only do C and that's what we're defending. Why did the limits thing just become a problem for you? Tristan? Technically the affirmative's um, definition is the most restrictive. Because of Their the definition is now even more limiting than yours. They're saying we can only do one thing. It's this thing that we did. Now, why would predictable limits be better? Because as long as you can argue that C is not predictable, you can argue that it's not a good limit. Okay? We can arbitrarily limit the app however we want. But that's not the same as there's an expert, there's a quality of literature that says it is just these two things. Just because yours happens to be more limiting, it's not good. Great. Wrap it up here. AF. What does the AF say? The AF always says afflex and creativity. And then they have one last thing we'll put down here, which is not a standard, but I'll come back to it. Affirmative flexibility is a standard where you say it is good in debate for the affirmative to have multiple options and to be less constrained. We're not saying we need a million options, but we're saying our, our app should be one of the four or five options that are allowed. It's not good debate, it's not fun debate when there's only one possible plan the app can do. Because what that means is at this tournament, we're gonna have 20 rounds happen and we're all gonna talk about the exact same thing and no one is gonna even try and think of different alternatives to that. It's not enough ground for the app. It's bad for the app to only be allowed to do one thing. The premise of the debate styles that we do, parliamentary debate, IPDA debate, et cetera, is that the AF gets specificity and the negative gets depth and breadth. What I mean by that is the AF knows exactly what they're gonna do ahead of time. They get the topic and then they get to pick their plan. You do not know their plan. You only know where it might generally fall. What that means is they are limited in the possible things they can do because there is a topic and the advantage is they know exactly what they're gonna do. What is the negative's advantage? You have no limit whatsoever. You can read whatever argument you want, any counter plan you want. There's no such thing as topicality against a counter plan. But your disadvantage is you don't get the specificity that the app does. But in a world where you say there's only one possible plan, now the app gets zero flexibility whatsoever. So we get specificity, I guess, but you know exactly what we're gonna say. So if you can find any reason why that's bad, we lose. There's a specific thing that happens in debate all the time that's really dumb. People write resolutions that are what we call whole law resolutions. Here's what that looks like. 
the United States should pass Senate Bill 619, the Give All the Puppies Guns Act, whatever it is, right? Have you ever seen a law? Is a law like one sentence? How long are laws, like bills? Pages, pages. Like hundreds of pages, possibly, with hundreds of things that bill does. The AF has to defend doing all of those things. You know what the negative can say is their counter plan? Do that, and then they can find any single thing in that entire bill that is dumb and pick out of it. They can go, the counter plan is the AF except subsection 431A. And now they just win the debate because it is impossible for an affirmative team in 20 minutes to be ready to defend 600 pages of law. And here's what the prep time looks like. If you're the affirmative, you're just the whole time right, oh, what does this do? I don't even know, whatever. When you're the negative, you read it, you read it. Oh, there's a dumb thing, we're done reading. We're not even gonna read the third page. We're gonna stop at page two because page two has something dumb. They're stuck with page two, we get to get rid of it. They just win. That's what's wrong with only having one option for the AF. The negative now has this massive advantage because they know what you're gonna say. It makes counter plans way too easy for them. Okay. Creativity, similar. It's where you say, you know what? Even if that is a cool definition, even if that's limiting, the purpose of this activity is for young people to try and think of creative solutions to problems. We shouldn't be thinking about the most common solution to the problem. Those don't work. We've tried those. Instead, you should encourage us because creativity is good for education. It's good for people to try and think outside of the box and go beyond the parameters that you're thinking. It's good for us to say river banks instead of financial banks, right? Creativity. Last thing here, this reasonability is not a standard. It is an answer on the voting issue. So here's what I mean by that. A lot of negative teams, when they read uh, their topicality at the end of it, they will tell the judge, you should evaluate this through competing interpretations. And what they mean by that is, the judge has to add up all the arguments on both sides and whoever wins that their side is better, like wins the position, okay? They have to be really analytical, they have to consider every argument, blah, 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 and then like a robot decide who wins. Reasonability is where you say, listen judge, if you heard our plan before the negative came up here and read topicality, and you thought, yeah, that's what I thought this topic was about, you would be an idiot to vote us down. Why would you change your mind? You thought we defended the topic before they started speaking. Why would you let them convince you that we're not now? Like we are reasonably topical. Maybe we're not the perfect definition that they want, but we're clearly talking about roughly what the topic's meant to be about. Maybe they wanted it to be IT security, but that's not what it says in the resolution. It just says security. So I don't know why you're mad that we put better locks on the door. Seems reasonable to me, okay? The app is always going for, we shouldn't have to win that our definition is the best. We should have to win that it's good enough to debate. The negative wants to say the opposite. They want to say, no, the app must win they have the best definition in the universe or that they meet our definition. Now, we're not gonna talk about this today. We're done talking about top count in just one second. The next lecture we have is going to be on answering topicality more specifically, okay? I'm mostly concerned with you being able to read this if someone tries to cheat. I'm not super worried with you having to learn how to answer it. Why? Because if you just defend the topic, you'll never have to answer this ever. You want to know what the best answer to topicality is? Be topical. Be objectively topical. Talk about the topic. Don't try and cheat. I, almost, I think literally... Junior, senior year, when I had, I think, almost 200 debates by the end of the year, I am almost positive I answered topicality like twice. I can only think of two debates where it ever happened because we just defended the topic. And also, the two times we had to answer topicality, we won because they were like, yeah, they're defending the topic. So easiest way to avoid this, don't be a cheater. But if they cheat, you whip this bad boy out, okay? Great. Kill it. Kill it. Kill the video. Turn it off. Turn it.